Welcome to Hands-On with Reinforcement Learning. In this section, we're going to talk about Markov decision processes and neural networks. In this section, we're going to take a look at number one, understanding Markov decision processes and dynamic programming in CART Pro V0. And then we're going to move to the second video where we craft a neural network using TensorFlow to predict the best policy for the agent. In the third video, we're going to craft a neural network using TensorFlow again to predict the value of being in different states of the environment. Lastly, we're going to then train the agents in CARPO v0 to complete the TensorFlow model that allows us to both find the best policy and understand the value of different states. After we do all that, the fifth video, we're going to go through visualizing and understanding how your software agents has performed and show that actually through a neural network, we can learn and teach an agent how to perfectly balance a pole on top of the card. This video is understanding Markov decision processes and dynamic programming in CARPO v0. In this video, we're going to take a look at what is a Markov decision process. The goal here is to formalize what we've learned in sections 1 to 5, so we can have a good base for 6 to 8. To really ground this, what I think is a quite a abstract concept of MDPs, we then relate both grid world and carts po to MDPs. So what is a Markov decision process? One of the first things you need to remember is this is often abbreviated as MDPs in reinforcement learning literature, papers, and also articles online. A Markov decision process is a formalization of elements we've seen already in the OpenAI gym environments. So before we talked about things like multi-arm bandit, we talked about contextual bandits, we talked about states and actions, and you might have noticed it, a lot of common elements that we've been talking about while going through the videos. So now let's formalize what these things mean and extracts the common pillars of reinforcement learning. So you might recall that in the first video ever, in the first section, we talked about this loop between agents and environments. So an MDP consists of states, and specifically states are also equal to observations. So if you observe, for example, in Cart's Po, that's the pole is in a particular position, a particular angle, then that counts as a state. If the angle changes, there's a new state. Or if in grid world, you're, the, the square you're in is index 1, you go to index 2, then that's a different state. So that's one of the key features of an MDP, where what you observe is it's the state that you're in. The second thing about an MDP is, after states is actions. So there's a set of actions that we explore before, you can go to m.action underscore space to find out the actions. And then now that we know states and actions, at every time step, the agent observes the states and then chooses an action according to policy. The agent then re receives a reward for that action, and the state changes to next state. It's called a Markov decision process because there's the Markov assumption built into modeling the way the agent interacts with the environment. The Markov assumption being the probability of both which state would be the next state, and the probability of how much reward we're going to get only depends on the current state and the action taken. So the task for the agent under this formalization is to learn policy, usually denoted as pi, that indicates which action to take at what state, expe maximizing expected reward from now till the end of episode or end of time. Let's use grid world, which we have seen in the previous sections, as an example. So the state is where the agent is in the square, and you you might remember that the state or which square it is is represented by an integer. The actions is the four Four, action, four directions that you can go wherever square you are. Reward is 
any reward that the agent receives by being in a square. At every time step, the agent looks at which square it is in, takes it as a number, and uses that number to determine which action to go. Let's turn to our most familiar environments, Karspo. So state is the vector of four numbers you get in the observation variable every time you call nth.step, that represents both the position and the angle of the pole. The action space, or the actions that are permissible, is moving the cart left or right. The reward is the current step, which makes that the more steps you survive, the higher your reward. At every time step, the agent observes how the pole is positioned and angled on the cart, and computes a function as a function of those variables, and then chooses an action accordingly. So there you have it. That's what a Markov decision process is. So obviously I've explained this in a very plain English, plain language manner. If you're interested, I do encourage you to read a book about reinforcement learning. A very good one is the one from Sutton and Bartow, very popular. If you search reinforcement learning book, you would see there's only one there. That gives you a more formal way to understand what an MDP is, how it relates to dynamic programming, and how it then relates to Monte Carlo and temporal difference that we're going to talk about later. And it really helps you to go into the nitty-gritty detail that you need to understand when you then apply reinforcement learning into other problems.